We're having so much fun, let's do a third initial condition. Three, an initial x naught and v naught. That would look something like this. If I were to give it an x naught like that and throw it up in the air, that would be an initial x naught and v naught. So let's see if we can describe that motion. So we could start with the x naught. So x at time equals 0 would be um, a 3 cosine of phi 3. And that's going to be equal to x naught. So we can't really use that as a 0 to give us anything. And then we could use the x dot at t equals 0 part. And that is, again, um, um, minus um, a3 omega naught uh, sine and then time equals 0. So it's sine of phi 3. And that doesn't equal to 0 either. That equals v naught. So this is a little harder. Nothing's equal to 0. So we still, though we have two equations, two unknowns, it's still solvable. So the strategy is solve each for a3 equate, and then solve for phi 3. So I'm going to kind of do all that in one step. And maybe you could see it. This a3 would become x naught over cosine phi 3. This a3 would become negative v naught over omega naught over uh, uh, sine of phi 3. And then if you equated those two sides, you'd have sort of x naught over cosine equals minus v naught over omega naught sine. And then you could switch them around to where you got it to sine phi 3 over cosine phi 3. Sine phi 3 over cosine phi 3. And then what would be left on the other side would be minus v naught over omega naught x naught. Those three amplitudes. And let's see. If you have that, then you also know that this is equal to tangent of phi 3. So then you have it. Phi 3 is the inverse tangent of this thing here that is all the, just the initial conditions and properties of the system. V naught, x naught, and omega naught. So phi 3. Uh, what did I say? Uh, minus v naught over omega naught x naught. So that's great for the phase. Looks like the phase is a little complicated when you don't have one of the simpler cases, but that actually makes sense. Because if I hold it upright and I throw it, at time equals 0, it's neither at 0 nor is it at its maximum. So it's not a sine and it's not a cosine. It's something in between. So it has to be either a sine or cosine with some phase that's not simply 0 or pi over 2. So that makes sense. Now we got to get a, a3. So well, you just plug in for a3. Basically, you don't get to simplify a3 very much. You can come here and say a3 is equal to x naught over the cosine of that phase. So plug in for a3. a3 equals x naught over the cosine of the inverse tangent of minus v naught over omega naught x naught. So that looks kind of ugly. And if you think that looks ugly, look at this. x3 then is equal to the amplitude x naught over the cosine of the inverse tangent of minus v naught over omega naught x naught times the cosine of omega naught t plus phi 3, which is the inverse tangent of minus v naught over omega naught x naught. Is that everything? There it is. There's a solution for x3. Not so pretty, is it? I explained why the phase is strange, because you're not really sitting right on a point where at time equals 0, it's at 0 or at a maximum. The amplitude is also strange, because it can go bigger than x naught. Right? x naught is where it was. 
when I threw it, so it has to go higher than x naught, so cosine will be smaller than 1, x naught will be bigger. So that really is what you need. But that was pretty complicated, and this is fairly simple physics. Surely there's an easier way to describe this. So let's look at all this and think about superposition a little bit. Um, so here is a plot of the position versus time. And the first one we're showing is x1. That was the initial offset, and then we just let it go. Okay. And then here is x2. So x2 was the initial kick. It's sitting at 0. We push it, and we let it go. Right. x1, x like a cosine. x2, x like a, um, a cosine with a pi over 2 phase shift, also known as a sine. And here is x3. And everything makes sense here for x3. It looks right. It had an offset. We pushed it a little bit. Then it comes down. That gets it out of phase. The amplitude's bigger. Everything looks fine. But according to superposition, another thing that was a solution would have been x1 plus x2. And if you think about it, these should kind of be the same thing. Because x1 plus x2 would be what would happen if you would do those two initial conditions at the same time. Give it an offset and give it a push. And sure enough, if we take our solution x3, this is the actual of that equation with all the inverse tangents in it, and we bring it over here with just the sum of x1 and x2, sure enough, they're the same thing. Okay. So superposition could have saved us all this work to get this. We didn't need to do this. All we had to do was add up x0. We could have said x3 equals x1 plus x2. So we could have just said it's x0 cosine um, omega0 t plus, or actually be minus, um, v0 over omega0 cosine omega0 t plus pi over 2. That's the x1 plus x2 we had before. These are the same thing. If you plot them on top of each other, you get the same thing. When you add sines and cosines that are either, well, in this case, they're out of phase by pi over 2 with different amplitudes, you get a shifted sinusoid in phase. Well, that's what this is. This is a sinusoid that's shifted to some weird phase. So that is sort of a silly case where superposition helps a lot, just a simple 1D oscillator. As you get into bigger physics problems, superposition comes much more, more critical. Here I'm just trying to give you the idea of what it can do, only if the equation of motion is linear.